Following the expiration of the state of emergency on April 30th, Michigan has seen an increased level of people leaving their homes. Some business owners are preparing to open in accordance with safe social distancing guidelines. People are eager to get back to much-needed work following nearly 40 days of a strict stay-at-home lockdown. Many Michigan citizens say it is time to move Michigan forward. As many states begin opening up across the nation, Michigan is in a battle over who is in charge. Governor Whitmer, citing unilateral authority, has extended stay-at-home orders through May 28th. Meanwhile, the legislature, elected by the people, refused to extend the state of emergency beyond April 30th. Under the Emergency Management Act, Public Act 390 of 1976, the governor can declare a state of emergency for 28 days. After 28 days, legislative approval is required to extend the state of emergency. This process under the Emergency Management Act has been followed since the initial response to the coronavirus pandemic. On March 10th, Governor Whitmer declared a state of emergency due to COVID-19. Then on April 1st, in accordance with the 1976 law, Governor Whitmer requested the legislature approve a resolution extending the state of emergency through April 30th. On April 7th, the legislature approved that extension through April 30th. Then on April 27th, in accordance with the 1976 law, Governor Whitmer requested the legislature approve a second resolution extending the state of emergency for another 28 days or until May 28th. However, the legislature did not approve an extension of the state of emergency beyond April 30th. In response, Governor Whitmer then issued new executive orders claiming unilateral authority under the Emergency Powers of the Governor Act, Public Act 302 of 1945, that was for time of war and civil unrest. This has set up a constitutional crisis in Michigan. The debate stems from an interpretation of the law. Now, the legislature says the governor needs their approval to extend the state of emergency, but Governor Whitmer says she doesn't. It's the legal battle that will likely end up in court. It's just a matter of when. Well, the law in Michigan is very clear. In order for any state of emergency to be extended, it requires an act of the legislature. And what we did last week, we came here We continued the regular democratic process, and we rather decided to codify some of her executive orders and put those on her desk. And we think that returning to the democratic process is an important step for us right now. What we did was we extended our hand to her in a partnership. She rejected that, and she decided to go it alone. So we also authorized me uh, to file a lawsuit on behalf of the House. The governor's executive orders have raised questions about the constitutional basis for her authority without having the legislature approve an extension of the state of emergency as required by law. There are also pending legal challenges to the governor's executive orders that have been filed by private parties claiming excessive and unreasonable restrictions on individual constitutional rights. We in the legislature feel very strongly that the state constitution is clear, that we have three branches of government in our state, each with equal powers. We are not a subordinate branch to the governor. The Constitution is very, very clear on that. We set laws, the governor can sign or veto them, and then the executive branch actually carries out the enforcement of those laws that are created. Instead, what we have right now is an executive branch of government led by our governor, who is choosing to act both as the legislature to create the laws and as the executive branch to enforce those laws. The governor is now unilaterally choosing to consolidate all of that authority underneath herself alone. We should all be very, very concerned that any person, this governor or anybody else, would choose to do that with no checks and balances that exist. Even beyond that, the other provision that later was in 1976, it, it you know, reaffirmed that there will be constitutional governance, which I'm, what I mean by that is we are a republic. We're not a monarchy. Um, In a constitutional republic, which um, Michigan's constitution and the American constitution guarantee and, and, and insist that we are that kind, have to have that kind of government, that is a representative form of governance where we, the people, you know, are the government, but we delegate authority to representatives in a legislature um, to make public policy. And then they are a check on the executive branch that carries out and executes the policy. We are now much more like a monarchy. We are under um, a one person uh, rule, ruling by edict or decree uh, with no check and um, 
and the governor has claimed that she will exercise that power for as long as she wants to. There's nothing less than the freedom and prosperity of you and your children at stake here. While the constitutional debate over who is in charge continues, a spokeswoman for the Attorney General of Michigan has indicated the Attorney General advised law enforcement officers to use their best judgment until a court resolved these issues. Meanwhile, some law enforcement agencies have decided to not enforce the governor's executive orders, even some of the executive orders that were issued by the governor on April 9th. A group of northern Michigan sheriffs has announced they will not be strictly enforcing Governor Whitmer's extended stay-at-home order. You know, I'm a, I, I'm a compassionate, constitutional sheriff. I, I care about my community, and uh, right now my community is hurting. They're scared and they're afraid. So that's why we all got together to stand up and say, okay, we got your back. We're here for you. Local business owners are caught in the middle of this constitutional crisis. They are trying to understand the legal implications and are concerned of being singled out by possible excessive enforcement actions by the governor and her executive branch. Many Michigan citizens are in a desperate economic crisis and are ready to take the right steps to safely move Michigan forward. The hair clippings are falling. I've had one of the busiest days I have ever had in my life in here today. Carl Mankey's Barber and Beauty Shop in Owasso is back open, disregarding the executive order to stay closed. I'm not trying to be a scuffle, I'm trying to make a living. After closing up shop in late March, owner Carl Mankey says he was tolerating the order until the last extension. I went to my knees. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do, I could not do another 15 days. The 77 year old says he hasn't been able to make ends meet. I was denied twice on unemployment, haven't seen anything on one of these uh, uh, other checks from the government. So Monday morning with mask and hand sanitizer on deck, he started welcoming customers back. It's time for us to just risk a little bit. It's just, it just, just is, and I'm, I'm in on it, uh, and I'm so glad he was open today. But for Mankey, who doubles as an author, that risk could bring unintended consequences. Mankey's. I got a call today that was telling me that I was, you know, that I was on the verge of the, that the prosecutor's office may have to do something and probably will. And he says he's not backing down. I have to make a living, you know. I, I know it's a misdemeanor, but it's an expensive misdemeanor. But I'm willing to take the risk and, you know, I'll, I'll do what I have to do in order to, to stay open. As a society, we have to decide if we are willing to take a 77-year-old barber charge him with a misdemeanor and lock him up in jail because he's, he's just trying to put food on his table, pay his rent, and get by. And people in this state and people in my district have to be able to take care of themselves. And when you have a 77-year-old barber saying, I'm just going to open up and cut hair, and we're going to criminalize that and take the, the political weight of the 10 million people of the state of Michigan and apply it against a 77-year-old barber and lock him up in jail, for cutting hair and earning a living for himself, I think shows the, the extreme depth of what this governor is trying to do.